The International Monetary Fund plans to visit Ghana's new government to discuss plans for implementing $918 million aid deal. East South Africa examiners are uh, looking at Barclays Africa of a multi billion rand apartheid era bailout, plus bondholders in this Mozambique will repay 60 million euro bond coupon next week, but JP Morgan sees a default. Hello and welcome to the program. This is Business Incorporated. I am Bosin Namafai. Let's get started. 30 minutes together. Let's start from the African markets where the Egyptian market is closed for today as usual. Uh, trading will resume on Sunday across the Gulf region. We'll talk about that in a minute. However, at intraday, the Nigerian stock market was heading southwards, uh, but Johannesburg Stock Exchange was in the green by about half a percent, holding on to the 52,000 level. Uh, the Kenyan Stock Exchange still trading water about half a percent down on Thursday. Look at the Middle East where the markets are closed for the weekend, but uh, this is what the, uh, Thursday's closing figures look like. A sample of that across the region, the Abu Dhabi market was in the green, uh, the Saudi Tadawul Stock Exchange also uh, eke out a bit of a green on Thursday, 0.39%, downhill, however, from the 7,000 level. The Qatar Stock Exchange uh, holding on to the 10,000 level, a little bit lackluster, 0.05%. Uh, while the Dubai financial market has shifted up less than uh, half of one-tenth of a percent. <clears throat> In Europe, investors are digesting <clears throat> uh, China, data from China, um, waiting for corporate earnings for U.S. earnings season. Let's bring in DWTV financial correspondent uh, Rick Batz, who will be <clears throat> talking to us about uh, what to expect. Uh, the auto sector uh, was trading flat today after... Uh, looking at the story from Fiat Chrysler, the U.S. Uh, EPA uh, checking whether Fiat Chrysler uh, cheated on emissions in its automobile. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has accused the car maker of illegally using hidden software to uh, allow excess diesel emissions. That was on Thursday, and that story is still trending this morning. Let's look at the U.S. markets now. We're, uh, we're looking at the earnings season and tracking the first trading lower than 2017, levels we have not seen since October the 11th. Let's bring on Gio Malandrino, who is our VOA uh, for China's correspondent in New York. Gio, good morning. It's good to see you. So um, yesterday we saw some interesting action. Traders were disappointed that President-elect Donald Trump didn't provide specific details on his economic plans, and that led to a dramatic two-day dollar as markets rotate into safe haven defensive assets like we saw with gold and with bonds. At one point on Thursday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 183 points on the session. Now, Trump, in his first speech since July of last year, he spoke on health care, warning about high drug prices and imports. That really hit the dollar. That could have been the result of some overseas selling that we saw Thursday morning because of the lack of clarification. We also saw that when the European markets closed yesterday, that's when we got the rebound in stock. So that dip could have really been a gift for those that were looking for deals that to buy on dips going forward. Uh, but you know, was anyone surprised at that the major indices were trending lower after that very major the first uh, press conference from the president's elect? Well, Boston, we've been on an extraordinary run since the election. Of course, we're going to see some profit taking in the sectors like the financials, which has led the rally so far. As I mentioned last week, there will be volatility around the initial transition of power and Trump's first 100 days, which is the case for any incoming administration. And yes, in this case, there are a, you know, a few more variables. I think once Trump actually gets in the Oval Office and understands the demands of what the job entails, his focus could shift a bit and that will calm down markets as well. Yeah, but so uh, do you think uh, earnings, fourth quarter 2016 earnings will uh, calm the nerves a little bit further? JP Morgan uh, reports Alcoa is not going to be the first uh, to report anymore because of the breakup of the apparent company. Uh, talk to us about Jill. 
Yeah, you know, J.P. Morgan hasn't reported yet. I'm looking now. Bank of America, their revenues, um, they missed just a bit, but they beat on the top line. What's going to be important for banks is there were revisions going into 2017, but the stock prices have outpaced that. For example, J.P. Morgan, their uh, revisions were revised higher by 4%, but the banking sector as a whole is up 17%. So it's not just the headline number that we're looking at this earnings season to justify stock prices, but rather forward guidance and what the CEO are saying about the economy, the consumer, and how they think the Trump administration will play into their business plans. The most important thing to come out of earnings, and this is across all sectors, is guidance. I would expect it to be muted until there's more clarity with Trump's policies, and then we will see revisions later in the year. Yes, thank you, Jill. All about guidance, 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 moving into the new year. Thank you, Jill Malandrino from the New York Stock Exchange.